Shalom, Israel. It's Officer Yuanathan. I'm here today with Officer Eman. He's going to be our reader today. All right, let's read Romans 15 and 4. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So everything that was written in this Bible was written for our patience and comfort, that we might have hope. And we are in a time in the last days that we need all the hope from the scriptures to strengthen us, to give us the confidence to go out here and do this work. And um, one of the things that brings us comfort is knowing that in the end, of the, we're going to win this battle. But we have to believe that we're going to win this battle. We come in and, you know, we got that zeal. Uh, you know, just like you get that first pair of shoes, you ready to run. We come in this truth, we ready to run and do the work. That's right. But that, uh, that race, it's not a 50-yard sprint. It is a journey. It's a marathon. And so, you know, these scriptures are constantly building up our faith, constantly lifting us up during the time of our lows. And uh, one of the things I like to do is go over um, why are we in these conditions? Why are we going through this? So give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 1. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the Most High God said he was going to set us on high above all nations of the earth. Hey, as black men and women, we can't imagine being on high above all the earth. We can't imagine being in rulership because we've been on the bottom for so long. We can't imagine verse 3. Read that. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. We can't imagine being blessed in the city because every city in America, we know where the ghetto's at. We're there. And there's nothing blessed about the city for us. We're cursed in the city. But at one time, we was blessed. We can't imagine the things, what it means to be blessed. Jump up to verse 2. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. Blessed shall thou be in the city. So imagine being blessed in a city where you're not getting chased by the police nobody's trying to kill you you have no drugs you have nobody hanging out on the corner robbing and stealing you can't imagine where there's peace in the city you can't imagine where there's a city where when we look at our leaders they look like us when we look at our neighbors there's it's love and a smile on their face we can't imagine what it means to be blessed in the city read and blessed shall thou be in the field. We can't imagine having good, healthy foods to eat. We can't imagine being able to feed our children foods where, you know what, we ain't got to worry about if they're going to have some type of mental defect. We, we got to worry about being overweight and obese because they put all type of chemicals in our food. We got to worry about having high blood pressure, diabetes, all these things because why? Now we're going through these curses. And our food's not blessed. We can't imagine having it good. We can't imagine where the most high is on our side. We've been dealing with our oppressor for so long. We done got used to misery. We, got, we done got used to being on the bottom. We done got used to hating one another. Because now we're cursed in this city. And I want to talk about the effect of what happened to us being cursed in the city. How are we going to change that? How are we going to turn that around? Just, um, go to Hosea 4 and 1. Let's see what it means to be cursed in the city. 
This is the book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth. There's no what? No truth. There is no one keeping any of God's laws in the land. There's no truth in the land. We couldn't even imagine. I mean, imagine being blessed with God on your side, fighting all your battles, giving you everything you, that you need in life. Then all of a sudden, you don't even know him. Nobody's heard of him. Nobody knows what he's looked like. Nobody knows his name because there's no laws in the land. Read. Nor mercy. Now there's no mercy amongst our people. We're the only people that got hatred for somebody that looks like us. We love everybody else. We love our enemies. We love the Chinese. We love the Japanese. We love the Africans. But we hate each other. We got no love for one another. Read. Nor knowledge of God in the land. We got no what? Nor knowledge of God in the land. You can't tell the Christian that we don't got no knowledge of God in the land. Because they think they deep. They think they know the Bible. They say they read every single day. But yet, God say they have no knowledge of God in the land. And you know how we know they don't have a knowledge of God in the land? Our pastors have been leading our people since we've been here. They've been our leaders. And all we have to do is look at their resume. Since they've been in leadership, we've had AIDS in the community. We had a crack epidemic. We have violence, crime, drugs, homosexuality. We have poverty. This is their resume of the people that swear that they serving God. That looked like a perfect resume for Satan. Read. Message. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. This is the effect of not having God, not having mercy, not having love for one another. We have black on black crime. That's the effect of what goes on in our community by not knowing God. That's the effect. We jump down to verse six. Verse six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're destroyed. We're totally destroyed. When you got, when we're the only people that has a God that looks like the other nations, you know we're destroyed. When we can't even accept that Jesus is black, you know we're destroyed. When the only thing that can tell us our history, the only thing that can tell us the solution to our problems, we say we don't want to have nothing to do with the white man's book. The white man is the problem. And we don't realize that that Bible is telling you that exact thing. That everything that we follow, everything that we believe in in America is evil and wicked. We're destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. That's what we do. We reject knowledge like it's going out of style. We don't want to hear nothing that nobody has to say. We don't want to hear nothing that these men in purple out there on the streets got to say. We don't want to hear the word of God. And it ain't just the people that's in the hood. It's your good old uh, neighborhood Christians. Your big hat wearing uh, females that's up in the church. The deacons. The pastors, you can't get them to do a sit down. You can't get them to sit down and go over the scriptures and find out how to solve the problems in the community. We're destroyed for the lack of knowledge because we reject God's knowledge. Read. I will also reject thee. Well, when you reject God, hey, there's going to be repercussions. He's going to reject us. And we've been rejected for over 400 years. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Read. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. We've forgotten the laws of God. The thing that gave us the blessings. The thing that gave us security. The most high God that fed us in the wilderness for 40 years. We've forgotten his laws. We've forgotten his wisdom. We've forgotten the thing that would save us. We've forgotten that. We have been assimilated into this society where we're more wickeder than our oppressor. Read. 
I will also forget thy children. He said that he would forget our children. That means our children grows up without a God. That means the next generation is worse than the one that you're living in now. Each generation gets worse and worse because God said, I'm going to forget your children. And now we see what's going on in our communities because of our children. These same children that we put in our arms and say we love them to death and we be ready to kill anybody for, be the same kids that terrorize our neighborhoods. Give me Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. They are what? Children are their oppressors. They are our oppressors now. The same children that we used to love, the same children that we sit there and say, he's going to be a great football player, he's going to be a basketball player, that little boy got potential. That same child, next thing you know, is strapped up in the community, throwing up gang signs. That's what's going on in our community. And nobody else's community is affected like ours. We're affected by not having God because the other nations don't have a God. They're not getting the wrath of the Most High God. We are. And those same children are terrorizing our neighborhoods. They're terrorizing our neighborhoods and they're putting fear in our community where we don't even want to come outside at night. Read. And women rule over them. And those same women that sit there and wanted to protect their children and keep them from their daddy rule over these bad kids. These same women that's going around making babies left and right with one man after another man is raising up monsters. That's what's going on in our community. And this is what's ruining our people. Jump up to verse 8. Verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined. Uh -huh. And Judah is fallen. The black man has fallen. Judah wants the praise of the earth. Now we were in Charleston and they got tour buses riding through the ghettos looking at our people like it's an amusement park to see us in our low state. Read. Because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord. Because we run our mouth, we so proud. We so proud to reject the word of God. And we act as if the most, God, most high God is not listening. And he's steady putting Judah down at the bottom. He's steady got the enemy with our foot on our necks. We steady getting shot down in the streets. We steady under oppression. Because we sit there and say, we're so proud. We're so proud trying to come up in this world instead of trying to learn this word of God. Read. To provoke the eyes of his glory. That's what we've done. We ain't did nothing but provoke the most high God. Read. The show of their countenance, the witness against them. Because we always turned up like we ain't got a worry in the world. We act like we don't care about nothing. We don't act like we don't care about God's Sabbath, his feast days, his holy days. Hey, we definitely don't care about the prophets when they bring out God's word. That's what's going on amongst Judah. The other nations, hey, we could go all around the, uh, the earth and they're lined up to hear the word of God. But right here in America, Judah, they act like they got it good in captivity. They happy being slaves. Read. And they declared their sin as Sodom. What do we declare our sin as? As Sodom. The black man has embraced homosexuality. The black woman has embraced homosexuality. This is something I would have never imagined as a child growing up. But now the black man wears skinny jeans with his, with his underwear hanging below his butt. Come on but now, cheeks, dog. The, the black woman, she more thuggish than the black man. She's driving forklifts. She's driving 18-wheelers. She's bucking up. She's getting her a woman, not a man, not a husband. She's getting her a woman. She, then she got a side piece woman. Huh? That's how wicked we've become. We're more wicked than our oppressor. We see what our oppressor do, we embrace it. We, we embrace it and take it over the top. 
the enemies put on uh, spandex, we said that's not good enough. No underwear. The enemy said, you know what? I'm going to wear my bikini out. Our women said, nope, I don't need no bra. Huh? We're more wickeder than ever. Read that again from the top. The show of their countenance doth witness against them. Uh Uh-huh. And they declare their sin as Sodom. Really? They hide it not. They what? They hide it not. They on full display for the whole world. All our people want to do is make videos, TikTok videos. They want to advertise their whoredom. They want to advertise their wickedness. They want to advertise their shame. Read. Woe unto their soul. What? Woe unto their soul. God said destruction unto their soul. Read. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. They rewarded evil unto themselves. That's your reward. The wages of sin is death. That's your reward. You want to get that little 15 minutes of fame? You want to be what they call video vixens? You want to be a, um, only girls? Guess what? All of that, at the end of the day, is going to be death unless you repent. Give me um, Jeremiah 6 and um, 13. Because I, if we don't think that this is just a, maybe a neighborhood thing, maybe it's a South Carolina thing, But this is going on all over the earth amongst our people. It's a spirit that's out there in this earth that's causing our people to embrace whoredom. Read. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 13. Read out. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone wants that mighty dollar. They'll sell out their soul for a dollar. They'll sell out their soul just to take a trip to Dubai where they can go be somebody's bed wench. Really, nigga? We, we, want, we, want, we want the nice car. We want the nice rims. We want all this fake materialistic stuff that only got value because we buy it. Nobody, hey, the other nations don't care about Louis Vuitton. They don't care about Gucci. We the only ones that's falling for that foolishness. We're the ones that's making our enemies rich, and they laugh at us. They don't even want us to wear their clothes. And we sitting there killing each other for that. We killing each other for, the, for that fashion, for them shoes. We do those things. We have no compassion, no mercy, no love for one another. Finish that out. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. From the prophet unto the priest. Your mighty leaders in your community, your Christian pastors, your T.D. Jakes, your Creflo Dollars, every single one of them are liars. Every single one tell you that you don't have to keep God's law. And look at our, look at our communities. You would think that, you know what, the state of our people would make them stop lying. You would think watching somebody get gunned down in the street, our our fathers getting locked up, our children going into prison, you would think they would stop lying to our people. To watch women have to raise children, raising these little monsters on their own when they could have a father in the house, you would think that the pastors would change. But nope. They head or full ahead towards that money. Every one of them want to be like T.D. Jakes. Every one of them want to be like Creflo Dollar. They all want the big churches, the mega churches. They want riches. They don't want the kingdom of heaven. Give me um, Isaiah 3, verse 1. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, the Lord. The Lord of hosts doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff and the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The oh. mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. Stop right there. Read that verse two again. Yes, sir. The mighty man. So the most high done took away the mighty men. That's how our communities are destroyed. That's why a white man could walk through a black neighborhood and feel safer than 
anybody in the neighborhood. A white woman could walk through the neighborhood and feel safer than anyone in the neighborhood because we have weak men. We only want to kill each other. We only want to shoot each other. We're afraid of our enemies. We have no more mighty men. We have no more men. The only real men that, you're see, that you see on this earth right now are the men that's out there trying to tell you that you're an Israelite. Read. That's right. And the men of war. Read. The judge. Uh-huh. And the prophet. So we don't have no more judges. We don't have no more prophets. Read. And the prudent. Uh-huh. And the ancient. And the ancient. Now we don't have no respect for the ancient. That's what's sad. We have no more respect for the, our elders. Our elders at once time had respect on this earth because they had wisdom, because they used to once be the mighty men. They used to be the men of valor. They used to be the priests, the prophets, and they all grew old. And they was given honor. Now we terrorize the old. Now we disrespect the old. Read the next verse. The captain of 50 uh -huh. and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer Read. and the eloquent orator. All of those are gone. All men of God that was mighty soldiers in, in the Lord, they're gone. But they're getting raised back up now. But we used to have that. We used to have that. We put fear in the other nations. Now the other nations rule over us and we join their military. Now we go around terrorizing the whole earth with our enemies. Read. And I will give children to be their princes uh -huh. and babes shall rule over them. And that's who's ruling over us now. Young babes with no wisdom. While, while only, only about money. Right now we got Lil Wayne's, we got Drake's, we got Kendrick Lamar's, we got all these people that are young and ignorant that are the leaders of our people. They have no knowledge of God. They lead our people. Our people follow them. They dress like them. They act like them. That's how we turned out to be gangbangers. That's how we turned out to be gangsters, drug dealers, because they gave them to be our leaders. Read. And the people shall be oppressed. Every one by another. So now we are only oppressed and spoiled evermore. That's what happens when you have no real leadership. That's what happens when you have no respect for your elders, no respect for your brothers, no respect for your sisters. We are only going to be oppressed and your enemy is never going to tell you the solution to your problem. They're going to sit back and watch. Because they get paid off your ignorance. They get paid off your death. They get paid off you going to prison. This whole economy is based off of us not wanting to read the Bible and apply it to our lives. Read. And every one by his neighbor, uh -huh. the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. What is the child going to do? Behave himself proudly. Proudly against the ancient. The child is going to behave himself proudly against the ancient. He's going to behave himself proudly against our elders, our grandmothers, our grandfathers. We have so much hatred in each other, we can't even protect them. Because we say, it ain't my kin, folks. That's how we think. And we'll watch young people sit there and do all type of things to the elderly. We see it happen every single day because we don't have no honor for the elder. We have no honor for the older people. They put fear in the older people. They hate being around young people. They hate coming out because they don't know what's going to happen when they come across young people. Young people are running around doing all type of wickedness that they think is going to give them 15 minutes of fame. Finish that up. And the base against the honorable. And the base of the lowest of our people disrespect the honorable. We see that every day when we go out and teach. We see the homeless, the drug addict. Ask us what are we going to do for the community? 
And we building schools. We giving them the gospel. We changing lives. We turning people away from being on drugs. We turning away our women from being whores. Hey, we turning men away from being whoremongers. Our people are marrying, raising raising families, buying homes, building communities. That's our track record. That's the resume of IUIC. That's what we're doing in our community. And yet our own people ask us, y'all ain't bring no sandwiches. We're giving them the word of God. We're feeding you. We're feeding you something you never had. The truth. Hey, give me um, Acts 2 and 17. No, give me Jeremiah 1 and 5. Because the Most High did not leave us in this state forever. He was not going to just leave us right here. He was going to do something. He said, I never forsake you. Because the Most High still loves us. Matter of fact, give me that Deuteronomy 76 right quick. The Most High still loves us. Sometimes we, you know, we're not being used to being loved. We're not, we used to being hated. We used to being talked about. We used to all type of wickedness. But to have true love, we ain't, that's, that's what's so hard for the black man to understand. That our God loves us. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God said he chose us to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he loves us. He loves us more than anybody on earth. Even though it might look like our enemies are on top, they're not going to be there for long because our God loves us. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 31. Deuteronomy. Yeah. Even, though, even though the Most High God punished us like he's never been punished ever on this earth, guess what? His mercy is even greater. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Read. He will not forsake thee. He will not what? Forsake thee. The Most High God is not going to leave us at the bottom forever. The only reason why we're there is because of our sin. That's the only reason why we're at the bottom. Read. Neither destroy thee, uh -huh. nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. He's not going to forget the covenant that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to honor that. The same way he said, if y'all break my uh, commandments, I'm going to put that whipping on you. I'm going to punish you. Guess what? He said, if you return back to him, he will deliver us from this evil. And if you're in this truth right now, you got to understand this is the greatest reward you could ever get. You, you are feeling the mercy of the Most High God. You're feeling the love by him awakening you from that dead state that we've been in. Because before this truth, we were just as wicked as hey, everybody else out there in these streets, if not more. But, we, but guess what? He knew that we was always greater than what we thought. Give me uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Bring it out. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Hey, he said, before I put you in that stomach, I knew who you was. Read. And before thou camest forth uh -huh. out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Read. And I ordained thee a prophet. He ordained us a what? A prophet. He ordained us a prophet. The Most High God said, before you was born, I ordained you a prophet. Think about it. Only you can lose it. He ordained you a prophet. And I'm really speaking about to you elderly men that's in the truth. You hoary heads. You have been ordained a prophet. All the things that you have had to endure in this earth, because of these young people, they can't understand the 60s. They can't understand Jim Crow laws. Y'all know stories that we could never even imagine. And the Most High ordained you a prophet to restore the people. That's a great honor. Read. My fault. Give me um, Isaiah 49 and 1. That honor has been given to the young. It's been given to the elder. 
It's been given to our older people. And we see the young. We see the zeal they have. But it's a lot of our people that's older, that's sitting in the body, not taking advantage of the opportunity that's given to them. That's all over IUIC. Not just our congregation. We sleeping on the fact that the Most High ordained us a prophet. That is an honor. That's a glory. We got to think how special that really is. Read that. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath, hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. He made our mouths like what? A sharp sword. This, hey, when we spit this words of this Bible out, as not anyone can stand up against it. The word of this Bible is a two-edged sword. It's going to cut every lie, every thought of their imagination. We're going to cut it with the word. The Most High made us powerful with this Bible. Before, we was nothing. But he's given us this gift. We have to take full advantage of this gift. Read. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Read. And said unto me, thou art my servant. What did oh, he say? Thou art my servant. He said, you are my servant. He said, you are my servant. You in this truth, you are a servant of the Most High God. You have a job to do. This ain't the Christian church where you come in, sit down, kick back, hey, enjoy the Sabbath, and go home. Hell no. You got work to do. You are a servant of the Most High God. Read. O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Jump to verse, verse 5. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Well, well, what are we supposed to do? To bring Jacob again to him. How are we going to bring Jacob to him sitting on the couch? How are we going to bring Jacob to him sitting in the back of the classroom? How are we going to bring Jacob to him if we don't come to Camp 101? How are we going to come to uh, bring Jacob to him if we're not studying? Message. How are we going to do that work? How are you going to call yourself a servant of the Most High God but won't do the work? Read. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorified in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Hey, the Most High God is our strength. You got to stop worrying about, man, I'm too. The Most High is your strength. He's your strength. You've forgotten that, hey, he lifted you from a dead state. The same way Christ woke up the dead, he woke you up. He woke you up. And he's given you the power and wisdom of the Most High God. He's given you a word that cannot be gainsaid. He's given you the strength. He's given you the wisdom. You're wasting it sitting in the classroom not doing the work. You're wasting it if you're not going out putting the work in. You're wasting it if you're not trying to take advantage to teach a class, hey, to put work in the body, to help the brethren. Hey, you wasting it. You wasting the gift that the Most High gave you. Uh, give me uh, 1 John 3 and 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. But do you know what type of honor that is to be called the sons of God? We should have been embracing that. That should make your teeth white knowing that you call the sons of God. You understand? You his sons. You got to stand up like men and represent. You got to make him proud. Don't be a son that he sit there and say, man, I don't even know why I woke this nigga up. We got to recognize that the Most High God loves us. And he made us his sons. 
And the only way he's going to deal with us is we keep God's laws. We're not keeping God's laws, then we're not sons of him. We're sons of Satan. We're not going to do the work that God called us to do. We're not sons of God. We're sons of Satan. So you can't sit on your tail no longer. It's time to step up and put the work in. If you've been sitting there resting, chilling, been in this truth for five, six, seven, eight years, hey, and you haven't put no work in the body, you ain't went out on them streets and highways teaching, you don't believe. I'm just going to keep it real. You don't believe. Give me uh, John 15 and 16. You don't believe that you chose it. But those that's going to do the work, we know. There's no doubt in our mind what we call to do. Read that. John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Hey, we didn't choose the most high God. We wasn't sitting around talking about, hey, let me read the Bible. We were sitting there trying to figure out how we can get in the club Friday night. We was either figuring out how we're going to get there, how we're going to pay to get in. We wasn't thinking about reading no Bibles, keeping no laws, no commandments. We was thinking about how we're going to get in some panties. We was thinking about how we're going to get that sack. We was thinking about doing evil. But somehow, some way, the Most High showed mercy and said, you know what? I like that brother right there. Wake him up. We didn't do it on our own. We would have never found him. Read it again. Ye have not chosen me, uh -huh. but I have chosen you. Read. And ordained you uh -huh. that ye should go and bring forth fruit. What did he ordain us to do? That ye should go and bring forth fruit. He said, go get my other children. Go wake them up. Go wake up my sons, my daughters. Go bring forth fruit. That's right. Don't sit on your tail doing nothing. Don't be sitting in the body not putting no works in. He said, go get more fruit. Read. And that your fruit should remain. Uh-huh. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Read that last part again. That oh. whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. He said, whatever you ask, I'm going to give it to you. So guess what? If you lack wisdom, ask for it. If you lack courage, ask for it. If you need understanding, ask for it. The Most High awaken you, ordained you to go bring forth fruit. But you got to put the effort in. You got to put the work in. You're going to have to start studying this Bible. Matter of fact, give me that, 2 Timothy 3, 2 and 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. That is a commandment. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Not unto men, but unto God. Because he the one that called you. He the one that ordained you to go bring forth fruit. So you got to study unto God. He's the one that's going to sit there and say, you know what? Either you a good and faithful servant or he's going to say, you know what? You just wicked and you deserve death. Read. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. He called you to be a workman that should not be ashamed. So when he come that day, that judgment day, he, you know what he want to see? That you put in the work. That you gave your life for this truth. That you was that living sacrifice. That, hey, when the brothers called and said they need somebody to come in and put in the work, hey, you answered the call. When the brother said, come down here, we need help going to war, you came. When the brother said, hey, we need you at Camp 101 so you can get built up, you came. When the brothers say, hey, we need you to read them four chapters a day, you read. Mosai said, read that again. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh-huh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You're going to have to be a workman. You're going to have to rightly divide the word of truth. You're going to have to be on top of your game. 
Why? Give me Matthew 10 and 16. We all got to step up. We're in these last days. Satan coming at us left and right. We got our own people sitting there doing the work of the white man. We got our enemies coming, plotting against us, passing laws to destroy our people. We got to get built up in this truth. Read. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. He sent, he sent us what? As sheep in the midst of wolves. He sent us amongst the wolves. We got to recognize that. Read. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. How are you going to be wise as serpents if you don't study? How are you going to do that? How are you going to be wise if you don't study? Read. And harmless as doves. How are you going to know how to keep your composure? How are you going to know how to deal with that scoffer if you ain't coming to count one-on-one? Message. How are you going to know how to deal with the wicked of our people if you're not putting in the work? Something will happen to our people when you don't want to put in the work. Something evil will come upon you because you don't want to take your job serious as a servant of the Most High God. When he called you to do a job, he gave you that holy wake-up call and woke you up and said, you're no longer property of Mr. Williams, Mr. Smith. He said, you are from the tribe of Judah. You are from the nation of Israel. You are my son. And we don't take pride in that. We don't take pride in that. Give me uh, Acts 2 and 17. This is the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 17. Bring it and it shall come to pass in the last days. Saith, in what days? In the last days. We in the last days. Read. Saith God, uh -huh. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Read. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Quoting scriptures. They know Christ. They know he's a black man. They know that they're the children of Israel. They prophesying that to other children. They prophesying that to grown ups. They know Revelations 1 and 14. They are prophesying. Read. And your young men shall see visions. Uh huh. And your old men shall dream dreams. He didn't leave out the old men. Y'all got wisdom when you use it, when you apply it, when you study. Read. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. Uh -huh. And they shall prophesy. They're going to do what? Prophesy. Now they're going to sit in the classroom and never go out. Prophesy. They're going to go out and prophesy. You're going to put in that work. That's his sons and daughters. How are you going to make sure that's you if you're not studying? How are you going to make sure that's you if you're not doing the work? How are you going to make sure that's you if you're not going on the blitzes and you sitting at home watching your brothers go to work? You want to make your calling and your election sure. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Proverbs 16 and 31. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 31. The hoary head is a crown of glory. The hoary head is a crown of glory. Read. If it be found in the way of righteousness. If it be found in the way of righteousness. 
That's when the hoary head is a crown. When it's found in the way of righteousness. Because we got a lot of old fools out there who ain't got no righteousness in them. That hoary head is a crown of glory when it's found in righteousness. When you're doing the work. Not sitting on the sidelines talking about you too old, your bones ache. Look, you should be willing to die to spread this gospel. You should be willing to give your life to spread this gospel. You got brothers and sisters, if you love your people, you should be willing to give your life to do this work. This ain't a time to sit there and sit back and chill waiting on your social security check. You've been sitting there your whole life in wickedness. Now you got a few, a few years left, you should be doing the work. You should be going a million times harder. Matter of fact, give me that in Baruch. Four and twenty-eight. Bring it up. This is the type of spirit you're supposed to have, because it should mean more to you. Cause you've been on this earth longer. You watched our people go through much, much suffering, much oppression. You've been probably searching for the truth your whole life, and you found it in your last days. And you're given the opportunity to be a servant of the Most High God. You're given the opportunity to be a prophet of the Most High God. Read. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, uh -huh. so being returned, seek him ten times more. Seek him how much? Ten times more. Man, you should be going way harder. You should be going way harder than these young people. I'm going to tell you right now, you should be going harder than young people. You should have no excuses. You should be setting the example for them. I see a lot of older brothers out there putting in that work. All praise to the Most High God for them brothers. They're trying to be the example for Israel. They're trying to be the example for these young men because there's no excuses. Most High don't want no excuses. He wants us to do the work. To be ready to die to do the work. So these older men should be getting praise for the job that they do. Not sitting there looking at them and saying, man, they don't do nothing. You're supposed to be getting glory. Because why? You should be going harder than anybody else. Give me um, Leviticus 19 and 32. Because at one time, think about it. Abraham, he wasn't no young man when the Most High told him. Put him on a mission. Man, almost was almost 100 years old, 99 years old, and went and did the work. Imagine if most I came to a to a hundred year old man right now. Man, we ain't getting out the bed. We ain't getting out the bed. We can barely walk. Abraham was doing the work. And I don't hear no scriptures telling me how he was complaining. How his back hurt. How it's too hot outside. I don't hear no scripture saying that. I hear the scripture say he was faithful. Faithful. Read. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 32. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. Uh-huh. And the and honor the face of the old man. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be rising up for the hoary head and giving him honor. But it's hard to do that when he won't be the example. It's hard to do that when he like being comfy. The hoary head that does the work, that's dedicating his life, you never have to question where he's at. He's being a servant. He putting his brick in somewhere in this body. That's the hoary head that's going to get honor. But it's a spirit amongst our people. It's a spirit amongst our people, and that spirit is fear or slothfulness. It's one or the other. I understand the fear. I understand what you was going through when you was in the world. We understand it. We know these kids is wild. We know they buck wild. But guess what? 
The Most High took that away the minute he gave you this word. Give me 2 Timothy 1 and 7. It should be no more fear in you. Death don't mean nothing. It's a new beginning. That's how we should look at death now. You older, you should be sitting there saying, man, I can't wait till I go. I'm going to go hard from this truth. That's how I'm going to go. Read 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear. The Israelite man should have no fear. You're supposed to stand up into your enemy's face and tell them the truth. Give them That's thus saith right. the Lord. There should be no fear in you. You see, the, hey, you see boots on the ground in Oak Block. You see boots on the ground in Compton, in Watts, in L.A., hey, in Atlanta, in the South, in New Orleans. Boots on the ground in every hood because there is no fear amongst God's sons. We understand the mission. We understand that, hey, our life, we got to give it. We can't save it. We got to be willing to give it. We got to have a willing spirit. Read it again. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. Read. But of power. But of what? Of power. Guess what? The black man that's in this truth, the Israelite man, you got power with God. Understand that. You got power with the Most High God as long as you keeping these laws and commandments. As long as you keeping up the charge of the Most High God. You got power with God and who can box with God? No one. Read. And of love. And of what? And of love. You've got to have the love of the brothers and sisters. There's no way that you got love of the brothers and sisters and you're not putting your brick in every chance you get. Message. Read. And of a sound mind. What does this Bible give us? A sound mind. Guess what? I don't care how old you are. If you keeping these laws and commandments, you should have a sound mind. If you ain't got a sound, sound mind, it's because of one reason. It's because the sin that's in you. That's what's holding you back. Give me the Isaiah 59. Verse 1. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. That it cannot what? Cannot save. Guess what? It don't matter if you're young, small. You keeping God's laws, guess what? He's going to give you that power to save. Read. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquity. Your what? Your iniquity. Your sins. Have separated between you and your God. That's why you won't go do the work. Because you're in the midst of sin. Your sin is holding you back. It ain't your back. It ain't the heat. It ain't your gas prices or whatever. It's your sin. It's your unwillingness to dedicate your life to do this work. That's what's holding you back. Your sin, because he commanded you to go be a prophet. He commanded you to go be a servant, but you got excuses. And your excuses is what's holding you back. Give me um, Jeremiah. Oh, read up. And your sins have hid his face from you. His sins did what? And your sins have, have hid his face from you. Your sins have hid your face from the most high God. Your sins, that's what's weighing you down. You got to get out of that sin for life. You got to stop making excuses. A soldier of the Most High don't make no excuses. He called you to be a soldier. You are the Most High's army. He called you to do the work. Give me that um, 2 Timothy 2 and 1. And this thing is no gain. This is no game. We are part of the greatest army on earth. And we should be proud. We should be breaking our backs to go do that work. You shouldn't want to miss a blitz. You shouldn't want to miss a camp. You shouldn't want to do it. It should bother your spirit when you can't go to a war with your men. Read. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace 
that is in Christ Jesus. He said, be strong in the grace. Don't be that weak, that weak, uh, timid Israelite. He said, be strong in the grace. Read. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, uh -huh. the same commit thou to faithful men. No, committed to who? Faithful men. We need faithful men. We don't need a million soldiers. We just need faithful men. Men that's going to give their life, dedicate their life to do this work. Read. Who shall be able to teach others also? What does faithful men must do? Teach others also. Faithful men got to be apt to teach others. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to make lessons. You're going to have to step up and do this work. No way in the world that a faithful man is not teaching others. Read. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure what? Hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Whatever come across your table, endure it. Whatever, whatever medical issues you have, endure it. You are called to be a soldier. And guess what? Soldiers going to get wounded in the battlefield. Soldiers going to get fatigued in the battlefield. It's a war. It ain't a place to relax. This ain't a vacation. We go to war. If you sitting on your tail every single day, you ain't a part of the army. You ain't a part of God's army if you're sitting down. You're slacking. You're being slothful. And the Most High can't stand a slothful spirit. That's one thing he despised is a slothful spirit. And it's all because your unbelief that you don't believe that you really are a prophet. You don't really believe that all things can be done through Christ. I tell you what, just give me Matthew 17 and 18. Matthew chapter 17 verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured, was cured from, from that very hour. So Christ rebuked the devil. He rebuked that evil spirit. Read. Then came the disciples to, G to, to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. When you sit there and think you can't teach a class, it's because of your unbelief. When you think that you're too old to go out there on the streets, it's because of your unbelief. When you think that you can't be a help to the body, it's because of your unbelief. When you think that your brothers can do the job without you, it's because of your unbelief. Satan is playing tricks on your mind. We didn't call you to the battle. The Most High chose you. He awakened you. He said, hey, I chose you to be a servant. He told you that, hey, you can do all things through Christ. If you choose not to do the work, it's because of your unbelief. That's what's holding you back. You need to strengthen that. You need to get in these scriptures and make yourself stronger. You need to get around brothers that can sit there and build you up if you got that such a weak spirit that you don't believe that you're supposed to be doing this work. Give me Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. What do we supposed to present our bodies? A living sacrifice. Man, you don't supposed to be worried about nothing concerning your health. Your pains. Whatever little weak thing you're going through. Guess what? That shouldn't even be an issue. Fight through it. Present yourselves a living sacrifice. Endure it. Stop making excuses. The Most High know what you can endure. He know what you can take. And I ain't talking about these brothers that got serial, serious medical issues. I'm talking about these brothers that come in, we see, walk around, chilling, kicking it, laughing, and then don't go do the work. The brothers that make excuses why they won't be soldiers for the Most High God. You're supposed to present yourself a living sacrifice. Read. Holy. 
acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. It's your what? Your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. That's the least you could do for all the wickedness that you've done in your life. We got to realize that, hey, we've been on this earth wicked, serving other gods, serving our lust, being hateful to our own people. We've been wicked. It's our reasonable service to dedicate our lives for this truth. It's our reasonable service to dedicate our time for this truth. It's our reasonable service that we dedicate our money for this truth. It's our reasonable service that we support the men and women that's putting in the work in this truth. That labor every single day. That go home late. That stand hours upon hours standing security. That spend Hours upon hours in that hot kitchen, over that hot grill, in that hot classroom. We should show them love. The same work that they put in, the same dedication that they put in, we should give it. We should be able to put that work in any place that we can fit in. We got to dedicate our lives to this truth. It's our reasonable service. Read. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. That's the problem with a lot of our people. They still got their worldly cousins, their worldly family members. You still attending worldly events. You still going to uh, family reunions. You still going to little Christmas dinners, Thanksgiving dinners, talking about I ain't eating no turkey. You still following the world. You still got one foot in and one foot out. You still sitting around dealing with family members that ain't in the truth. If you're a hey, my family member ain't in the truth, they are enemy on the most high God. Only thing I really want to know is, hey, you picked up that Bible yet and started reading? Nope, I holler at you. Ain't nothing to talk about. I done spent many hours trying to convince you that, hey, this Bible is real. This your history book. Hey, this God in this Bible, he's real. Us coming out of captivity, that's real. And they still want to be chilling. In captivity. I ain't got nothing to say to somebody that don't want to put the work in. I ain't got nothing to say to, to somebody that's going to sit there and mock what we're doing. Dedicating our lives for ready to sit there and die for this truth. It ain't no conversation we can have. It ain't nothing about you that make me say I love you too. Because you show me that you hate God and you hate my brothers, my sisters. Ain't that much to talk about. I'm just going to keep it 100. The only thing I want to know, have you repented? Nope, I got to go. Conversation really over at that moment. But there's a problem. There's a problem. We don't believe. We don't study. We don't take it, for, we don't take it serious. But if you want to do it, why don't you just ask? That's all you got to do. Ask the Most High God. James 1 and 5. Ask with a sincere heart. Because why ask for wisdom if you ain't going to use it? James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If any one of you lack wisdom, if you think you ain't strong in these scriptures, you think you don't know a lot of precepts, he said, if you lack wisdom, ask most high God. Read. That give it to all men liberally. He said, hey, I'm giving it out to you if you want it. I'm giving it out to you. Open up the book and read it. Guess what? I feed you. Keep these laws, I feed you. He'll feed you with so much knowledge, you'll be ready to burst. You can't stop talking about God. You won't stop wanting to do the work because why? He's feeding you that knowledge and wisdom. That's if you're hungry for it. You got to be starving for it. Read again from the top. If any of you lack wisdom, uh -huh. let him ask of God. Read. That give it to all men liberally. Read. And upbraid it not. Uh -huh. And it shall be given him. He said, I'm going to give it to you. If you want it, I'm going to give it to you. Read. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in what? In faith. In faith of Jesus Christ. 
You got to believe in Christ. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He commanded you to teach. He commanded you to go bring forth fruit. You ain't doing that. You don't believe and you don't love him. Simple as that. Read. Nothing wavering. Uh Uh-huh. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Uh Uh-huh. Driven to the wind. I'm sorry, driven with the wind and tossed. He said, if you wave and you just like a wave, you just out there floating around, you know, going from here to there. You ain't grounded. You ain't rooted. You're soft. You're weak. The wind can blow you. Read. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. If you waver and you get nothing because you in sin, most high is not dealing with you. You get nothing. Read. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double-minded man that say, I love Jesus, I love God. Come to the Sabbath, won't do no work. Won't go out there and put his life on the line. That's what a servant do. That's what a soldier do. Dedicate his life for this mission. We got to recognize that that is the calling. This ain't no way, no way in the world you get into the kingdom and you ain't facing dangers. If it ain't coming from your enemy, hey, it could be your own health. Don't really matter. Present yourself a living sacrifice unto the most high God. Give me um, 1 Corinthians 9 and 17. 9 and 17. You got to want to do this work. We shouldn't have to beg you. We shouldn't have to ask. I love when I see, hey, I need a brother. I need, I need help with something. And brothers jump on that call and say, I got you, officer. Brothers jump in that car and say, I'm on my way to, to Charleston. I'm coming, officer. Because they know we're about that work. They know we're ready to put our lives on the line. They know the danger that's out there. And they say, if my, if my brother in danger, I'm in danger. That's a brother that got love for me. The brother that's going to put that work in, that's going to go through the battle with me, that got my back. That's a brother that loves this truth. That's a brother that loves the most high God. And that's a brother that want to follow Christ's example. Read. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. You ain't got to tell me no more. You ain't got to beg me. He said, if I do it willingly, I have a reward. That reward is the kingdom. That's what I want. That's why I'm here. Just let me know where you need me. Just let me know what I can do. Let me know where I need to go. I'm there. That's the spirit you got to have. Read. But if against my will, Uh a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. If I sit there and do this thing grudgingly, I'm not going to last long. I'm just here for a short little time. Because I'm not willing to really do the work. I'm kind of going through the motions. I got to have brothers put their foot in my butt for me to go do the work. I'm just going because brothers getting on me. I'm just going to teach the class because brothers getting on me. I'm just going to be here for a short period of time if I take on that type of spirit. We got to recognize that, hey, Most High not dealing with that. Most High love a person that does the work willingly. Give me Hebrews 6 and 10. We be sitting there trying to do stuff for rank. If you want to be, hey, if you want to do more work, hey, go for the rank. You should want it. You should want to be a bishop. But if you just want to be over men, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Read. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. God is not going to forget your labor of love. Because that's what it is. It's the love of the brethren, the love of the sisters. It's the love of the Israelites. It's the love of the Most High God, the love of his son Christ. 
He's not going to forget your labor of love. He's going to remember all the times you made that sacrifice. All the times you was up late. All the times that you made them 15-hour road trips. All the times that you went up and down the road to go to battle with your brothers and sisters. He's going to remember those things. He's not going to forget your labor of love. You will be rewarded. You will get that crown of life. What better feeling in the world can that be? Give me uh, Luke 14 and 23. This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto his servant, go out into the highways and hedges. What did he say to the servants? Go out into the highways and hedges. If you hear, you are called a servant to go to the highways and hedges. You called to go wake your people up. Read. And compel them. To come in. What do we supposed to do? Compel them to come We're in. We're trying to compel them to come back into the body of Christ. That's the job. That's the mission. We're trying to compel them to come and do the work. How are you going to be a servant and you don't want to do that work? How are you going to make excuses when that's the mission? Give me Proverbs 22 and 13. We ain't got that much longer. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 13. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. That's what the slothful man say. He said, I ain't going out to them highways and hedges. There's a lion out there. They out there, hey, hey there's too much danger out there. I'm going to let them young brothers go out there. I'm going to let them young bucks go. They got that zeal. They making excuses. Read that again. The slothful man said, there is a lion without. Uh -huh. I shall be slain in the streets. What do they say? I shall be slain in the streets. He's the scared for his life. He's going to be slain in the streets. Man, come on. Read it again. Say, read it one more time. The slothful <laughs> man said, there is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. Can you imagine? Most I tell you, go out there and do the work. And you say, I ain't going out there, man. Them lions out there. Them, and you know what it is? Them gangbangers out there. Them crazy people out there. We ain't got no guns. All we got is a Bible. That's all we need. That's all we need. We got the power of the Most High God. You shouldn't be afraid. But that's the slothful man. The slothful man got excuses. He got excuses. The slothful man scary. He's scary. Give me Ecclesi uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayed. That slothful man, he ain't going to do the work. And we sitting here trying to build a nation. The school needs things. The body needs things. But, hey, these things fail because why? We got too much slothfulness in the body. People got excuses. People got somewhere to go, something to do. That's the slothful man. He got an excuse why he can't do this or why he can't do that. He'll sit there and watch the building decay. He'll watch it go down. When we supposed to be the servants of God, we supposed to take care of the Lord's house. Read. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. Through idleness of the hands. That's somebody that don't want to put in the work. They'll sit there and watch everything crumble around them. That's what they'll do. Give me uh, Proverbs 12 and 24. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Read it out. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Uh-huh. But the slothful shall be under tribute. The slothful man is always going to be a slave in this society. Because I guarantee the white man doing everything, his power to stay in rulership. We're supposed to be doing everything in our power to bring him down. 
But the slothful man, he, he cool with being in captivity. Recognize that. He cool with his condition. He is cool watching his brothers and sisters still be under impression, oppression. That's the slothful man. You got that spirit, you don't want it. You should be doing everything to get that spirit off of you. Read. Matter of fact, give me um, Proverbs 21 and 25. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him. The desire of the slothful killeth him. Read. For his hands refuse to labor. That's why he's going to die. When you don't want to put the work in that the Most High called you to do, you going to die. You will not make it. That's why a lot of you sick right now. You're sick every Sabbath. Because your hands are slothful. You got excuses every single week. And you don't understand that Most High is killing you slowly. You just sick now. And he says, some of you shall sleep. Because why? You're slothful. You don't want to do the work. He called you to bring forth fruit. Those fruit are his sons and daughters. How are you going to be slothful at that? You did the work for the white man. You was there on time. You, put, you broke your back for him. You can't do it for the most high. You can't do it for your own people. You don't find that suspicious. Shoot, you deserve to die. I'm just going to keep it 100. You don't want to do that. You deserve what you're going to get. Give me uh, Proverbs 19 and 24. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 24. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom. Well, a slothful man does what? Hideth his hand in his bosom. He ain't going to put his hand out there to do no work. He ain't going to put his hand out there to help you. When it's time to go do the job, he, he nowhere to be found. He's sleeping on the job. He don't answer his phone. He ain't on the conference call. He hide his hand. Read. And will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. He ain't finna help you do that. That's the slothful man. You hanging around slothful people, you need to get away from them. The slothful man good for nothing. He walk in death. He don't even know it. Give me a uh, Sirach 22 and 1. Let's see what the most high think about the slothful man. Sirach chapter 22 and verse 1. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. Is compared to a filthy stone. You ever picked up an old dirty rock? You can't wait to drop it. <laughs> you wipe your hands clean of it. That's what a dirty stone is. Oh, slimy dirty stone. You drop it with the quickness. Read. And everyone will hiss him out. To his disgrace. Uh-huh. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. He compared to what? To the filth of a dunghill. He said, you like doo-doo. You stank. You stank. Who wants somebody to smell like doo-doo around them? Who wants that? Oh, funkies, lazy, good for nothing. Nobody want that person around them. Oh, slothful man. Don't want to do the work. And we called to do it. It's our reasonable service. So if you got that slothful spirit, you better get in these scriptures and get rid of it. You don't want that name. You don't want that on you. You don't want that stain on you. Because in this truth, your name is all you got. And you don't want to be known as the man that don't put in the work. Or the sister that won't put her brick in. You don't want to be known that person. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name, you know what? You know what you need that precious ointment for? When you're aching and you're hurting. But when you got a good name, you don't even feel no pain. You know it's good. You're good wherever you go. They know you. 
They go, Officer Emmanuel. They go, Officer, hey, Officer Elishua, they know you. They know you put in that work. They see you all over the country putting in those blisses, putting in that time, traveling up and down 85, traveling up and down the country, going across country. You got a good name. They know you. You're amongst the brethren that got good names. These, these, are, these are our leaders. You know them amongst them because why? You put in that work. You done built your name. Don't let somebody destroy you. Don't let your slothfulness destroy your name. In Israel, that's all you got. Give me Proverbs 22 and 1. After this, one more scripture. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. So, hey, a good name is rather to be chosen than riches. You can have all the money you want. But you know what? That's just a sorry, good, lazy, no good for nothing drug dealer. Don't nobody care. But you're a servant of the Most High God. You put in that work. You out there teaching the people. You bringing them to salvation. You turning people to repent. That's a great name. You want to be known for that. So you won't have to put that work in if you want to build up your name. You ain't going to never build up your name sitting down on the couch. Read. In loving favor rather than silver and gold. So a good name is better than silver and gold, better than any money can buy. So build up your name. Put the work in. Dedicate your life for this. Don't make no excuses. Let's do the job. Give me 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Read. Preach the word. Do what? Preach the word. So let's go preach this word. Let's go teach our people. Read. Be instant in season. Uh-huh. Out of season. Listen, we're going to do it no matter what. We're going to put this work in. Read. That's right. Reprove. Do what? Reprove. Uh huh. Rebuke. Read. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Read. For the time will come will, when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that's the time. We're in that time. It's our job to go out and teach the people because they're not enduring sound doctrine, they're following all type of lies. And it's our jobs as the servants of the Most High to go out here and teach our people, no matter if it's in the classroom, it's on the streets, it's on biblical uh, uh, clubhouse. We got work to do. There's all type of avenues to do this work. Find a place to get in where you can fit in. But don't sit on the sideline. Don't be that slothful servant. Read. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. Read. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's what we see going on right now. We got so many philosophies and doctrines and lies. We hear it every night on Biblical Smoke. That lets you know that, you know what? We can't rest. The work got to be done. There's more studying to be done. Because every other week they're coming out with some new doctrine trying to go against the truth of this Bible. They're trying to figure out some type of way to get the heathen in. The heathen ain't getting in. Because of the men of the Most High God, we on the watch. And we're going to destroy all lies, all false doctrines. Read. That's right. But watch thou in all things. Uh -huh. Endure affliction. Do what? Endure afflictions. Do endure afflictions. Nobody's worried about all the aches and pains you got. We ain't worried about all the things you're going through. God say endure that thing. Read. Do the do. I'm sorry. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of a what? Evangelist. You are called to evangelize. Do the work. Read. Make full proof of thy ministry. Do what? 
Make full proof of thy ministry. And the only way you can make full proof of your ministry is by going at it 24 hours, 24-7. Never stop. Never give up. You got to put the work in. This got to be your life. This is what you got to dedicate your life to. If you sitting there watching TV all day, you too idle, brother. We got lives that need to be saved. Our, our people are destroyed. There's no way in the world we should be just chilling every day like we just waiting on Christ to come back without doing nothing. You might as well go back and join the Christian church. Join the choir. Get you some tambourines. Go sing with the women. You don't want to do the work? That's where you belong. They got a good choir for you. I know you know some songs if you ain't doing the work. Read. For I am now ready to to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Uh huh. I have fought a good fight. That's what you want to say when you get older. You want to be able to say, I fought a good fight. We know Paul fought a good fight. We know all the things he endured. We ain't got to go through that yet. So there's no way that we shouldn't be saying right now, we have not fought a good fight. We should be going strong for this truth. All you brothers got the hurry head. Listen, it's time to get a new spirit. It's time to put it on your boots. Strap them up. It's time to come in next time in the Sabbath class with a whole new spirit and say, you know what? I'm ready to go put in the work. I've been chilling too long. You sisters, guess what? If you've been that same way, it's time for you to find out what you can do to help the body. Because we keep growing every single week. And there's so much work that needs to be done. We are building a nation. It's never been done in America. IUIC is leading the way. And we can't have no lazy prophets. We can't have no slothful prophets. We need men of the Lord that's going to put in the work. Finish that verse and close it out. For I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have did what? I have kept the faith. We kept the faith. We kept the faith. We do the work. We give ourselves a living sacrifice. There's a reward in the most high kingdom. That's the faith that you got to keep. That's the belief that you got to believe in. With that, I say shalom. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 